Hi, today we're going to be looking at this hot air station. It's the Aten ST862D and I'm a little bit late to the party on this one. I think uh, this one became popular uh, a couple of years ago when Lewis Rossman stopped making quite so much profit on the quick 861DW. I think they put their prices up and he wasn't happy about it. So he found another low cost hot air station uh, to tout on his website. So we're going to be looking at this one, having a look at the user interface, the build quality and its performance and accuracy. It's a 1000 watt heater hot air station with an airflow rate all the way up to 130 litres per minute. And this particular model was supplied to me by Phone Fix China. They've got their own website, but also it's available obviously on AliExpress. Let's have a quick look at how much this one is going for. So here it is on the China Phone Fix website and it's available in two different versions with the 45 degree nozzles or without. And it's also available in 110 volt or 220 volt version. So it's 112 pounds plus shipping and that depends where you are in the world if you look at their aliexpress store then it basically has the all-inclusive price so we're talking about 167 pounds or so um, and it's again available in that 110 or 220 volt version now compare that to the quick 861dw and you can see the quick is about 80 pounds more expensive so um, you know if this does have the same build quality and performance as the quick then it's probably uh, quite a decent option that will save you a bit of money, especially for hobbyists. So for once, the handpiece is different to the other Chinese stations. There's a few differences here. So first of all, uh, we've got this retaining spring for the various nozzles. So they push on, you give it a little twist, and it kind of seats on there, but then it's retained by that spring, and these aren't coming off easily. Then also we've got this on-off switch. So it does have a reed switch in here, which will make sure that the hot air station shuts down when it's placed in the cradle but when you take it out of the cradle you press the button here to heat it up and I think that's there to prevent you accidentally causing the hot air station to heat up if you happen to knock the handpiece or the cradle over. You can use it to turn off uh, from this button as well should you wish to. Uh, so that's more like a safety feature. I'm not really sure whether it's that convenient to have it up here. It might have been convenient to have it down here where you've got your fingers but this is a deliberate thing uh, just really for safety. Uh, and then there's a few differences in the mouldings, uh, which does make it quite comfortable to hold. And then we've got the strain relief and the tubing. Now this is quite different tubing to all of the ones that we've seen before. It's almost this matte uh, ESD conductive tubing, really quite soft and pliable, but it is thick in diameter. And unfortunately, this one also appears to be the shortest tube yet. It's probably about 55 centimetres long, so really, really short. And as a result, when you hold this, you really feel the strain of the tubing from the uh, main station because it's quite short. It stops you having quite a lot of flexibility. So it's a little bit poorer in that regard. And obviously, I always say uh, the Metcal is quite amazing because it has a really thin tube, but also it's extremely long. So you've got a lot more flexibility. It's a lot less fatiguing to use, whereas this one I can see being a little bit annoying after quite a short period of time. Now, as I said, uh, this one is the one that came with the 45 degree nozzles and you've got quite a selection here. I think it goes from 10 down to uh, 4 millimetres and similar for the 45 degree nozzles. And this should be more than enough to cater for most needs. Um, if you're doing specific work on the same IC over and over again, you might want to see if you can find a compatible you know, TQFP type part where there's four nozzles specifically aimed at heating the legs and not the chip but for most general purpose hobbyist work this kit is going to do you absolutely fine you probably won't need to buy anything else at all and then we've got the cradle which is pretty much the same as every other cradle out there we've got the uh, thing which allows you to get the tip off so you just put it in there and it drops into the bottom where it can be left to cool down and there is a magnet in here so when you place the handpiece in the cradle it knows it's in there and allows it to shut down. Uh, this is fairly quite heavyweight. It's uh, all made of metal, but I think there's a, an extra piece of metal at the bottom to make it a little bit more bottom weighted. But that seems to sit quite happily there without any risk of falling over. And onto the main unit. And once again, this is a completely different form factor to most of the Chinese stations that all seem to be loosely based on the same design. This one has flat sides, um, which is quite convenient actually. It means that you could place other pieces of equipment above or below and it's also really quite shallow. So if you've only got a small work bench or something like that, this might actually suit a little bit better 
than some of the others that seem to be big for no real reason. Half of them are quite empty anyway. Uh, so it's made from a, a folded sheet steel uh, design and one thing that I've noticed is it only has the air vent on the bottom and this is where the air comes in to be blown out through the hot air nozzle which might mean that this is actually going to pick up dust off your workbench and everything else because this is yeah, you know we've only got this little bit of space here it's very likely to pick up particles and dust from here rather than at the back like most of the other units so potentially a little bit of a uh, poor design choice there it does feel quite nicely built apart from the front panel these buttons are loose there's almost two millimeters of play before you get to the point where you press the tactile switch underneath. These are really quite loose, so I'm not really a fan of that. But it's got, um, you know, generally the user interface that we quite like, where you've got the airflow up and down, temperature up and down, as well as the three presets. And then it's got a character display on here, so you've got the, the temperature or airflow, along with a few fixed icons around it for the user interface. And the power switch is on the front, so... Uh, that will please some people that don't like power switches at the back of the unit. And then just on the back, we've got an IEC connector. So let's take a look inside the unit. Quite a nice build inside. So we've got the fused IEC connector at the back here. And the line neutral goes straight to the double pole power switch at the front. And then the power then goes to this filter PCB. And the filter PCB has a couple of suppression capacitors on it a common mode choke as well as two Y capacitors that go to this screw terminal here that then goes to the earthed chassis. So that's to prevent uh, too many bits of noise getting out the AC power lead. And then the wires here actually end up going straight to the front panel PCB and then another pair of wires go out to the mains power transformer. You'll also notice there's a relay on there and the reason that the power goes straight to the main PCB is that we do need mains on here to provide power to the heater in the handpiece and it looks like this relay here actually can physically turn off power to the heater so it's not just under control of the triac which is quite a nice feature it means that basically under normal circumstances the heater will be powered off and even if something happens with the triac unless it's commanded on by software control then this relay isn't going to provide power to the heater um, then we've got the blower motor at the back here. This also looks really quite high quality. It's on, on an anti-vibration mount, as you can see. And again, it's got this very flexible, almost silicone-like tubing that goes to the connector here that then goes out to the handpiece. And through the center of that, we've got the wires for the heater and the thermocouple and also for the power switch. So that all looks pretty good. And there's a good solid earth connection, ring crimp, and everything onto this earth stud on the bottom of the unit there. So everything all looking good. The wires all seem to be cable tied together. The only thing I don't like is this was actually sitting on this quite sharp edge. So I'll just push that down a little bit better um, so it doesn't fray on this sharp edge here. So the front panel PCB seems to be fairly well laid out. At the top here we've got all of the control electronics. So we've got an ARM 32-bit microcontroller just here, as well as the two programming headers, so the JTAG, and then this looks like a bootloader slash UART type connector here. This connector goes to the handpiece, so we've got the thermocouple and that push button and also the read switch. And you can see here, here's the op-amp for... Uh, the thermocouple to give us the analog voltage into the microcontroller. So all the control electronics at the top. We've got a twin 9 volt winding from the transformer going straight in to these linear regulators. So this is providing a couple of voltage rails for the electronics on the board. Then we've got the brushless DC motor driver at the bottom here. And you can also see a switch switching regulator here to give us our regulator 24 volt supply. So that's all connected to this connector here. And then we've got a yet another power supply at the bottom this one seems to be doing the zero crossing detection as well so a 7 volt AC winding uh, giving 5 volts for control of the relay but it also seems to be doing the zero crossing detection for the triac here which once again is opto coupled so we've got good isolation all over the place isolation slots all of the um, planes cut away around the AC section so overall this is actually quite a decent layout and the assembly all looks really quite nice so uh, no real complaints on the build quality 
of the internal electronics of the main unit. It looks like the transformer took quite a beating during shipping. It must have been dropped or something like that because this winding is all cockeyed compared to the rest of the transformer. Hopefully it's still working properly uh, because it's quite a unique uh, winding ratio on here. I won't be able to find a replacement directly. Uh, but wow, this has a really, really strong smell of transformer varnish. You could probably get high if you left the cover off for too long. And obviously this is going to be blowing out the nozzle because it's going to uh, be sucked in straight through here. But yeah, really, really strong smell. Right, so let's power it up and it gives you the firmware version and then it says off. And you'll notice when you take it out of the cradle, by default, nothing happens. You have to press this button here for it to start heating up. And that heats up fairly quickly. You might just be able to see at the top there, it says real, which is suggesting that this is the real temperature in the handpiece. Now, there's no way it's that stable, so it's obviously giving some extremely filtered value but this is the temperature uh, that it's actually measuring here we can quickly adjust the temperature by pressing up and down here and it changes to set instead of real and then it goes back to real so you can see it's already reached 290 degrees c so pretty simple user interface you hold it down and it goes up in 10 degree steps or you press it individually and it goes in one degree steps And then we've got the same for the airflow, so it's saying 50% airflow at the moment. And we can adjust that just here. And it's quite a smooth sounding blower. But it gets pretty noisy above about 30% or so. But there is quite a bit of airflow. I'm not sure it's 130 litres per minute. But certainly that feels more powerful than anything you'd need to use on a normal PCB. Then we've got our presets here. So... Uh, we can just go through and if we want to set a new preset for example 410 degrees C at 45 we hold down the button and it stores it so we can go through at 410 45% so very very straightforward user interface and then you can either press the button on the handpiece or you can put it in the cradle and the fan speeds up to cool down the heating element until it gets to about 100 degrees C. And then shuts off very rapidly. Now in the user manual, it does describe a menu that you can go in to change some of the functions. Now, uh, you probably have a hard time trying to understand what each function is from the display that's on here. So it's quite important that you have the user manual, but you can go through you can put a lock on the temperature so the user can't adjust the temperature. You can change the units between uh, C and F. You can reset the factory default temperatures and also the calibration. And then you can also adjust the calibration manually. And there is a YouTube channel for Aten. I think it's called Aten Lily. Um, and they show how all of these units are assembled. But also it shows how they calibrate them. So it looks like they do a pretty good job of calibrating each individual unit. We'll check it in a moment. Um, you can also turn off the button beep. Uh, there is a timer like you see on a lot of these hot air stations so that if you've got a specific process where you only need to apply heat for like 25 seconds or something like that, this can facilitate that. You can turn a standby function which allows you um, to have the unit go into standby after a certain number of minutes. And then there's also the option to override that startup mode. So if you want this to heat up every time you take it out of the cradle instead of using the button, uh, then this describes how to do that. That's option five. And you can turn it from normal mode into the forced mode. So let's see if we can do that. So to enter the user menu, you press one and three together for about three seconds. And then you can scroll through the menu options by pressing one and three, one to go up and three to go down. We'll also turn off the button beep uh, so to change the setting, you press up and down and then press 2. And that's turned off the button beep. We do have to enter the user menu every time you change a setting. And again, we can change it there. Press 2. And now when we remove it from the cradle, it should start heating up. There we go. And when we put it back in, it starts cooling down. And I think we should still be able to use the button on here as well. So we pressed it and it's cooling down press it 
and it starts heating up again. So uh, yeah, quite a few useful features here if you don't like the way it works by default. So let's have a quick look at the calibration of the unit. Right, so we've carefully got the thermocouple placed so it's not touching the metal part of the nozzle and we'll start heating this up and have a look at the calibration. So we'll do the 200 degrees C first. And that is surprisingly good as you can see that's pretty stable there at 200 degrees C. Let's increase the temperature. Oh, it's a, actually it's a little bit fiddly to set the temperature exactly when you're getting close. There we go. There we go. That's pretty good actually. That's probably the best calibration that I've seen on any of these hot air stations. 360. You can see it slowly climbing that last bit. This temperature is obviously fake. We can see what it is on here. But slowing down right at 360, so just slightly over. And let's see what the maximum is. 480. So it climbs very rapidly as it's getting there. Um, and then it's a little bit slower to get to the final set point. But it looks like the calibration is pretty much spot on on this thing. So just slightly high on the 480 but it can definitely reach its maximum temperature that it's designed for. That's the Aten ST862D, pretty good for the price, just a few little minor issues. The buttons here, the air vent on the bottom and the extremely short flexible hose. If those were addressed, I think this would be pretty much the perfect hot air station. But generally speaking, for a hobbyist that doesn't want to spend too much money, you can't really go too far wrong with this hot air station. And as you saw, calibration was actually spot on. Uh, I haven't actually seen anything quite as good as that from any brand of hot air station, so they've really got their temperature control down, even if it is lying about it on the display. So I'll leave a link to this item in the description down below if you're interested in taking a look at it. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and comments in the comments section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.